All right. So today we're talking about how to heal from emotional wound. Can you turn your Bibles to Genesis chapter 29, verse 31? So we want to start from a place of definitions just to explain what emotional wounds are. You know, and um, yeah, I don't know if you're watching online. I wanted to really participate. We're hoping that sometime this month we can also have a live viewing where I can see you watching on Zoom and you can ask questions directly. We're hoping to be able to work that out. And if you want to share the link with someone, this is a good time to share the link. I always ask them to share this particular link, you know, because I think our world is suffering from this. And you know the thing about emotional pain, especially in Africa, a lot of people are suffering from emotional issues but do not know because it has not been defined. You just, yesterday I was talking to a friend of mine, um, really a church member, but he's a friend of mine also. And he just told me about how his friend had committed suicide because of, you know, issues that he had. And let me tell you something. Can I, let, let me tell you why. Let me, look up here. The more successful you are, the more your emotional flesh will show up. When you're very poor, it doesn't show up. You know why? You're fighting for survival. You're fighting for food, clothing, and shelter. But as life gets comfortable, all of a sudden, you begin to pay attention because those things are not... It's not as if you didn't have the emotional issue when there was food, clothing, and shelter. But those things distract you. But now, those things are gone. You begin to pay attention. It's like the Maslow hierarchy of needs. Once the basic needs are met, then what? The bigger needs. And that's what is happening. And that's why it's good to say... So, when we say guys don't have emotional issues, I think guys have more emotional issues than women. That's why guys don't cry. Because when guys cry, it's terrible. Guys cry like earthquake. Women just say, mm-hmm. When a guy cries, he stumbles on the floor, he falls on the floor, then it's really earthquake. And the reason, I'm, so, so why is this teaching very important? The reason why this is very important is this. It was something I stumbled on. God took me through a journey. And that's where I began to really understand about the power of emotional things. Maybe I should start from 3 John verse 2 before I read this verse. I always, always use it as a foundation of my teaching on emotional series. 3 John verse 2. This will be very good today and um, I'm, I'm so glad. So if you want to share with your friend, get on your phone. You can help me share with them on Instagram, YouTube. Get on your phone. Let's do that quickly, right? Let's do that. Everybody has a phone. If you don't have the handles to follow, let me put the handles on the screen. I never tell people to share during the services. I only tell them during NLP. But... Um, Because of how this service is, I always encourage people to share. All right, so put your handles on the screen quickly and people can go ahead, follow and share. All right, so they'll go ahead, follow and share. I'm just waiting for them to do that. Media room, can you do that quickly? All right, so that's the handles. Those are the handles. So they can watch or listen on any of these handles. And if something hits you, you can tweet it or thread it and just put P- hashtag PB Speaks. The hashtag is PB Speaks. Hallelujah. You can, that is a continuous hashtag, PB Speaks. You know, hallelujah, PB Speaks. All right. So why is it important? Why is it important to, um, why is it important to do this? Give me that bottle of water and someone can give me, what is a sharp object? You have a sharp object? And a plate, give me the plate that it's on. Oh, you, you are, yeah, yeah. Br- 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 give me that plate, yeah. What's a sharp object? Just give me a sharp object. A lady's going to have some sharp object. Is that sharp? Let me see, is that, sh- where's the sharp object? Your pen, no, no, something sharper than that. Sharp and strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, just pull it, pull it out for me. Just put that this spiral. I'm going to make a mess of the state. So this is you. So the Bible says, Beloved, I wish you prosper even as your soul prospering. So this is what emotional wounds and depletion look like. This is you. And let me, let me open this first. Put this in your pocket. And this is you. Be- because you're emotionally wounded, I'm sorry, I'm going to make it. Close it first. You have to close it very well. Is it closed? Okay. Stay. Okay, that's it. I, I got it. I got it. 
Uh, yeah, that's it. You can leave the top. Remove the top. Remove the top. That's it. This is what emotional moons look like. They're just draining. And after some time, you feel as if I need replenishment. So give me another bottle of water. Hold it. Hold on to this. You're just draining over here. So you look for things to top you up. And most of the time, the things you look to top up are destructive things. So you're looking for some sex. You're looking for cocaine. You're looking for weed. Some of you want to make more money. Some of you want a relationship. Some of you want to try another type of sex. And you feel yourself. But what happens? You're depleting. And, and the reason why you're depleting is because you've not really explained the fundamental issue of depletion. And the truth is that there are many Christians that are also depleting. And that's what the Bible says in Touch of verse 2. It says, Beloved, I want to ask you, have you been drained without doing anything before? That's what I'm talking about. And the thing is that this is you on a normal state. But all of us have seasons in life where other things deplete us. Maybe it's stress at work. Maybe, and you wonder why you are so aggravated. You are very aggravated because now your depletion is multiplied because of the state you're in. And, I'm, and, and, and you're just leaking. You're just leaking emotionally. And this is the reason why to love you is difficult. The reason why is that if you date someone like this, the more you point to them, the more it doesn't stay. So the girl that loves you wonders why you're so much a terrible person. But you're not terrible. It's a fact that you, and this is the reason why you can't love back because you, you're just empty. There's nothing to give. And sometimes this affects your productivity at work. Praise God. Hallelujah. They don't want to give an extra one. Because then you are depleted. Yeah. You need to hold it up. The ladies are advising you right now. Thank you. You're depleted. And guess what? I love what is happening because I can teach some more. Where's the, where's the, where's the roving camera? It's not around today. As you deplete, move backwards. Everybody around you, you just deplete on them. Your life is messy. Look, look at how messy. You look. I wish the camera can get what is on the on the stage, because yeah, because your life is so messy. You're, this is your life. You've 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 depleted everywhere, everywhere in the choir. They know your story. In the church, they know your story. At work, they know your story. Your friend know your story. On Instagram, they, that's why you stay all this rubbish on Instagram because you have to deplete somewhere. When you see people that address pri private issue on Instagram, they have issues. Even if someone abuses you, if you talk, it will die. Because the hardest person to argue with is the one that says nothing. Hey, you're just depleting, you're just depleting, just depleting. Depleting everywhere. Everybody knows that. You know, and, and you wonder, why do you talk so much? And the truth is this. In this kind of state, either you're Christian or not, you're going to malfunction. And someone says, how do you know this? Because I've been there. I, you know, I wish I was a perfect pastor. You have perfect pastors that have perfect stories, never made mistakes. I'm not one of them. Praise God. Thank you. And because you're depleting, and because you're so used to it, you find yourself putting yourself in an environment that depletes you over and over again. And that's why throughout this month, if you know someone or you're watching online and you think that this needs to help you, you need to find a way to be here for us to help to deal with this thing. Glory to God. See what the Bible says. It says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper. Even what? All other kind of prosperity is, pros is connected to the prosperity of your soul. So if your soul is wounded, I want to ask you a question. Just for, let's think about it. Why did you think Solomon had many wives? Maybe his background can tell you something. Number one, he was a child born out of wedlock. 
It was illegitimate. Number two, when they had Solomon, they had killed all the brothers. He experienced trauma. Number three, his father, his mother was slept with like rape to have him and he lost his brother. It was a terrible thing. And <coughs> at a young age, he lost the mom. He lost the dad, rather. And maybe he never had genuine connections with people. And when he took every woman, she saw them as my sister, my mother, the one I did not have. And he would stay with them. Have you noticed that ladies that don't grow up with their father are very attracted to older men? Yeah, I know you're an example. That's why you're laughing. <laughs> and and you, know, you know what I'm very attracted to most older men? The reason why they're attracted to that, they really think they're looking for love. They're looking for your father. But nobody has explained it to you. So you think you're looking for love. You're looking for your dad. So there's a way that man responds to you that gives you, that emits this emotional need and you begin to feel very safe in it. And before you know, you respond by loving the person. Sometimes when you see Christians that have indiscriminate sex, they may not be loose. They just want to share something intimate with someone. They want to share something intimate. And, and, it, and, and the thing is that they think that the sex will bind us together. Praise God. I said praise God. I said praise God. Just like some guys, sex is discharge. When they are stressed, sex is discharge. That's why guys can say with prostitutes, they just discharge stress. Because they've trained their mind over and over again that sex is a spot of relaxation and discharge. That when I'm stressed, I relax. I sleep with somebody. Let's look at the Word of God and get into this. Genesis chapter 29. So you must, so in this teaching, we're talking about the soul, how souls are broken and how God wants to heal the soul how God wants to heal the soul how God wants to heal and that's why in the services sometimes you find a lot of people crying and breaking down and the reason the reason why that happened is because sometimes the tears is a sign of healing or is an expression of you letting go and that's why people are crying and you want to interrupt them I don't allow you to do that because that's a process myself someone said why did they talk the reason why is that even talking is healing itself didn't you read James chapter 5? It says, confess your thoughts one to another that you may be healed. Did you read it before? James 5 verse 16. It says, confess your thoughts one to another that you may be healed. That's a strong part of just having a conversation. Glory to God. Look at what it says. Confess your thoughts one to another and pray for that what? That you may be healed. The objective of the... And that's why the, the, the Catholic Church, the Catholic Church practice as a ritual where you confess and that confession is not more of the priest forgiving you it's such of a healing for your soul itself because you let it out some of you have had things that you are carrying and you just need to talk to someone either your boyfriend or someone and say this is the way i feel because on set conversation can develop into your body hallelujah genesis chapter 29 verse 31 the Bible says, and the Lord saw Leah was hated. It, 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 you know, this is very powerful. It's not just that Leah knew she was hated, that God agreed with the perception that she was hated. So sometimes you can feel hurt, but it's not true. But God actually agreed. And let me tell you something. Sometimes you can feel hurt and it's not true. Because feelings can go up and down. The Bible says, and when the Lord saw that Leah was hurt, he opened her womb. And Rachel was barren. Next verse. The Bible says, And Leah conceived and bore a son and called his name Reuben. For she said, Surely the Lord had looked upon my affection. Now will my husband what? Did you see what the wound had done to her? The wound had said that this is what the emotional wound did. Number one, you're not lovable. So you need something extra for him to love you. He says, Now I've had a child. Now, Will my husband love me? And what happened? Did he love me because of that? No. Then she said, let me do it again. And that's why some of you, you'd go and do things again and again, hoping it will bring you love. And the more you do it, the more it loses value. 
Look at the next thing. The Bible says this. The Bible says this. Verse 33. The Bible says this. And she conceived again and bare a son. And said, the Lord has had me that was hated. He has given me a son and called his name Simeon. If you read the whole of the story, she had children on. She could not have children again. And when she could have children again, what she did? She took a maid servant to go and sleep with her husband. Because what she was saying was that, if you can't love me, I need something to use to negotiate. The question is that, what are you using to look for love? Some of you men use money. You, you want to put money on the table. Listen to me. The person will marry your money and leave you alone. So what is emotional? So one of the stories we're considering today is the story of Leah. How Leah, Leah was deeply hurt. She was deeply hurt. What, what really hurt her? And you, you know, she was deeply hurt because her husband did not just love her. So what are emotional ones? Because emotional are real. You, you can marry someone that's in love with you. I, I know people that marry someone that are in love with other people. Yes or no? Right, the people like that. So what are emotional wounds? Let's define it. Emotional wounds is the aftermath of trauma or incidences. Emotional wounds are the aftermath. So the same way, wounds in the natural is a work of an accident. Yes or no? It's the same thing. Emotional wounds are the aftermath of what? Incidences or trauma. Emotional smooth speaks of hurts, speaks of something that hurts you, speaks of something that can detolerate. Emotional wound speaks of something that has a negative impact on you because if you are wounded, it will impact you in a certain way. You may choose to ignore it. For some of you may have a wound here. You may dress well, but that wound will impact you. It can impact the way you sit down or the way you work. It impacts you. If it's a wound, it impacts you in a certain way. There'll be something you don't function well in because you're wounded. Sometimes it's your faith. It's just the fact that you're so angry with God because you thought he allowed a lot of things happen to you. And you're so upset with God. You're so, a lot of people are very upset with God because they're saying, if God is really alive and God loves me, why is my life going this way? Why was I raped? Why, why did I lose my parents? Why did God allow this? Why, why, why did I get pregnant as a child? Look, I know people that have sex for the first time the night they were this virgin. That was the night they chose to cheat and they got pregnant. And their friends have been having sex professionally. <laughs> I really think people that get pregnant are good girls. Personal opinion. Because people that don't get pregnant, they know how not to get pregnant. <laughs> because they are professionals. But the good girl doesn't even know if I'm ovulating or I'm not ovulating or that I should do this. You say, hey, she, she don't know, I should use something, I should not use something. The other ones know. If I want you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what I'm saying this? I think the church needs to be more kind to people that get pregnant as I wait luck. <laughs> I, I really think so. The reason why I said so is this. I'm not saying they've not sinned. But I'm really saying that if you know the ones that are pregnant and aborted, the reason that our own sin only shows the sin is not, the, oh, you know, the pregnancy is not the sin. The sin is the sex outside marriage. So the one that, so the question is that if you want to take the sin, then take everybody that sinned. And it starts from the ladies because it's the ladies that point them out and talk about them. Just remember that Jesus is kind and loving. Be like Jesus. Kind and loving. Let's be known for love. Not for criticism. Let's be known for love. Can I be honest with you? When I was a young Christian, what I didn't understand was that the most critical people I knew, the most difficult teachers I had in university and secondary school were the born again. And I don't know if this trying to be strict or disciplined or maintain a standard, they just let the bad taste of God in my mouth. Because I'm like, if this is what just looks like, I don't want to be like, this Jesus. And you choose to be a kind Christian. You know how I will sit? I will sit in the car park. Just normal someone wants to drive out of the car park before you. The way you will block them. But if it's the pastor, oh, pastor, hmm. 
a brother wants to ask for your number in church, the way you say, uh-huh, yeah? Be kind. If you don't want to give him your number, just say something like, you know, um, I don't really know you. Let's start for the Instagram. Dear me, I will reply. And let's be, be known for kindness. You're a guy that is doing what the girl needs your help and she needs 20,000 naira because she's in a fix. Next thing, come to my house. To do what? You say, tell them. So you're a professional beggar. <laughs> tell them. Tell them. You're a professional beggar. I said she's in a fix, not that she does it professionally. How do you know tell them? You say, tell them. You didn't even say tell him. There is them. You beg number one, number two, number three, number one. Only you. Praise God. Any small time, please can you help me with this? Yes, come to my house, come and collect it. They have bank accounts, too. But because you know, you say, come, you say, no, I don't use transfer. I don't. Um, it's when we see. Because you know exactly what you have to do and what you want to do. Just remember, blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. The Bible says, he that lendeth to the poor, he that giveth to the poor, lendeth to the God, who will never forget, he will repay. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. So emotional wounds speaks of hurts. Emotional wounds, emotion, and like every wound, like physical wound, if you don't take care of it, will detolerate. Emotional wound also, if you don't take care of it, what happens? It will detolerate. Did you see how this lady lost her whole self-esteem? Entirely lost her self-esteem. When people have emotional wound, why must you deal with emotional wound? Number one, you must deal with emotional wound because like Leah, you don't want to lose the essence of your person. You just, you forget who you are. You just, you just, she just forgot. See, Leah, Leah became an object. She had no more value. She thought all I can use to attract my husband is now to have a child. Just be producing children. Can, can, can I talk? Some of you, the way you have mastered sex styles, because they've told you that ah, the way you are going to hold men is to be someone up and down and twerking like a rat parrot. If you told me you will move like you move like this. So, you know, you even do the sex that is a sin. You don't even enjoy it because at the end of the day, you're just like, oh, ooh, ah, ee, oh ooh, 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 ooh. you just be moving like a snake. And, and as you're doing it, you close one eye so that you can be looking at him. So like, is he looking at him? If you want to sing, sing well. Enjoy the sin. Bible says sin is enjoyable. But my advice is that don't sing. Praise God. do that because now because for you sex is not no matter something you enjoy it's like this question he now marries you can you keep up the acting and that's why a lot of people when they, they get married then the man begins to complain she doesn't like sex like when we're dating but she never liked sex then that was the hook to hook you i don't know why you're laughing now so why deal with emotional wound? Because you lose your self-esteem and self-identity. Some of you, you've just put yourself, because you, you've put in a place you cannot talk. You've just lost your self-esteem. You've lost your self-identity. You've lost it. Can I be honest? I mean, guys that want to marry girls from rich family. You just see the guy. The guy can talk. Oh, he will just lose his voice. We'll do this, we'll do this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And the reason why is that because of the wound of poverty, he has lost his voice. He has lost what it takes to be a man. Same thing with some girls. When you want to teach people that are very rich, maybe richer than your background. When your mother has warned you, Ijoma, Ijoma, have you heard? Whatever he wants, wants with him or this man is the savior of our family. And 
in your heart. So you go into that marriage, but you're never happy. And the thing is that the first one or two years, the money will make you happy. But after two or three years, then you get tired of the money. But what emotional does is so it so wound you. It just wound you. You know yourself. Some of you, it's a rape you had. It's a trauma you experienced as a child. So I've talked about relationship, but it's something that you experienced as a child. It's trauma you experienced as a child. Something that happened to when you were young. The second thing you that why you must grow. So you, you lose yourself, and God does not want you to lose yourself. The second thing that happens is this: you begin to generate negative emotions. Top three negative emotions: fear. Fear. You're just very afraid. You're just paranoid. Fear. Another one is anger. You are just a movie locomotive ang- anger machine. Glory to God. Who can identify with me? Anybody? Just, just wave your hands and say, who wants to share, me, share with me a story? Who want to share a story with me? Something about you? Something that happened in the family? Okay, hey, give it to him. The microphone is on. Yeah, it's fine. Is it on? Praise God. Yeah. Good day, church. Okay, um, I think um, mine basically was the fact that I grew up from a family where dad happens to be... Um, we were never close to him because of his kind of person. So... What was this kind of person? He comes in and immediately he comes in, you know, it's like the lion of the tribe of the family. So, everyone just leaves. He doesn't care, basically, if um, my mom hurts himself or herself, but he's actually that person who, even when mom is a bit hot, he can actually just say, could you just, just get out and all of those things, you know, stuff like that. So, so how did that affect you as a person? It made me, at some point, I think I was in Genesis 1 or 2, I wrote a letter and kept it on my dad's table. I was going to leave his house. <laughs> it was... We didn't have that relationship, sincerely. So even when he started trying to be close to me, I felt like I don't really need this kind of person around me. So it made me, to a very great extent, felt so less of myself that even when I now see love, I'm thinking that it might end up that way. So I just don't want to get close to So you're someone. afraid of loving, right? Something like that. So certain persons have actually complained that I've hurt them and it's not intentional. Sincerely. Because you're not, able to, you're not able to reciprocate love. Exactly. Yeah. So, it, it, it's, a, it's an emotional wound. It's called the father's wound. So it's, it's really had uh, made me, it's had cost a lot of relationships you for me. you with your own self-esteem also? To a very great extent. Yeah, I figure you will. To a very great extent. Yeah. And the reason why you struggle with your self-esteem is this. Because most time in the home, the father is a self-esteem builder. People that are close to their father are very confident. Yeah. People that are close to their mothers are very caring. Most of the time, it's not 100%. It's just like large percentage. So you see this guy right now. He was, so, so someone, is, someone is trying to love you back. And this, this is the kind of guy that you will, you will just... The, guy, the kind of guy that is... Let me tell you how he did. He will stay around, stay around, stay around. He will never commit. Yes or no? I really try to, but then... You try to commit? I try to commit but, I, but as, then, as much as I can. But, and whenever I try to go beyond a certain limit... You will pull yourself back. I feel like, no. If, even when the person is sincere, oh, sorry, I didn't pick this call because of this. Oh, this didn't happen because of this. I'm like, you know what? I don't want to get to that extent. So let me just... Yeah, because in your mind, there are stories you tell yourself that don't exist. I hope you know that the interpretation of whatever happens in your life is based on the narrative you have already. Praise God. That, that is very powerful. So this kind of guy, you see him that, you, this is the kind of guy that you would, you would just be dating, the, you just be going, are we, what are we doing? Well, I'm just looking. It, it will be very long, and, and you will think he's doing it intentionally. You will not understand that there's a negative software working in his system that is making him behave that way. I mean, one guy was telling me recently about his girlfriend. I said, ah, you should not date her. And I never met the girl, but I began to say she's like this. I said, oh, yeah, yeah. I said, how do you know? I said, because what you've described about the family, I think, number one, the father, they found the father, the father killed himself by suicide. The, you know, just a lot of things happened in the family. I said, that kind of girl needs help before she gets married. 
And you know the truth, a lot of us need help, not just a lot of us need help. Praise God. Okay, let, let's go deeper. So there will be fear, the negative emotion, fear, hurt, and guilt. So seven, seven types of emotional wounds that you have to deal with. Number one is rejection. And we'll take it just slightly. Number one is rejection. When people have rejection, you'll find them, you'll find them being very detached from people, which is some of the things he has explained. They just be detached. Did you notice, why was the prodigal son, the guy that got the money and ran away? Did you notice the two of them have problems? Both the older son and the younger son. The younger son had money and took off. He was one that could talk. The older son lived like a slave in the father's house. Rejection. When people experience rejection, they want to run away from their life. They don't like their life. They don't like themselves. They fundamentally feel that like there's something wrong with me. That's why I'm being rejected. Glory to God. The second one is this. I'm going to come back to this. It's abandonment. And as I said this maybe last week. When you see people that are very clingy, clingy people, most of the time they were abandoned. Those are the people that, clingy people are the ones that stay in an abusive relationship and they never leave. The reason why is that they would rather have an abusive relationship than have no relationship at all. And the reason why they do that is because they remember what it means to be abandoned in time past. And that is a bigger pain for them than someone should abuse them. And when you look for people that abuse people, they know how to pick people that have abandonment mentality. They pick them as prey intentionally. They can sense, they can sense that this is a victim. Praise God. I said praise God. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Give someone the microphone. Who wants to share the microphone? Give me. Yeah, thank you. There's a lady just before the camera. Yeah. Where you're sitting is a very far place to have the microphone. Yeah. No, just, it's, no, 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 no. The one, that's the second person. Yeah. Go back. Go, 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 go. Yeah. That's the second person. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Okay, I am the last girl in my family. Before my, I lost my dad, I was the closest to my dad. Um, I saw him struggle all through the sickness. And before he, he fell sick, I had a very strong bond with my dad. Yes, later he died. And I had to stay with a family. And I was abused in many ways I can't mention right now. What, what abuse in the family? The man in the family. The, the, like your father's friend of relative? A family some, member. A family they, were, they were in laws. And because I wanted to prove, they kept, the man in particular kept on mentioning that I'm a very useless child, I'm a bastard, negative words. And what did you want to prove to him? I knew what my father told me before he died. What did he tell you? He believed so strongly in me. I can't hear you. He believed so strongly in, in you. Me. My father had great plans for me. He, he was a man that he would spend everything just to make sure I, I get to do what I want to do and uh, achieve whatever I want to do. So how are you struggling now? Most of the relationship I had, this is just uh, both genders. I keep on having this um, flashbacks. Needs. Needs. Prove that I am better. I am, and it ends up so what have you had to endure to prove that? Sometimes when people hurt me, I refuse to say anything about it. I wouldn't mention at all. I feel like if you see me break down, it's my, it's a weakness. Did you hear that? Because some of you, can I be honest? 
Some of you are too strong for your liking. And you don't know that the ability not to be able to break down is an emotional dysfunction. You've been taught that if either as a guy, it's not as a guy or girlfriend, it's as a guy or girl, if you break down, you have emotional issues. And the truth is that it's just normal as human beings to be able to break down from time to time. In fact, most of the time you bond with your partner after a melting point. Tell, tell me, yes. So the previous relationship I had, in every sense, I knew, I knew very well. So, so they, tend to, they tend to abuse you, right? Yes. They, how do they abuse you? They, um, yeah, the one that goes out of your way, they don't even do it. I do a lot to make sure the relationship works because I feel like... Um, the success depends on you. Yes. And like the last person I was with, we continually making me feel like... Um, he was managing the relationship with me. He was managing you, right? Yeah. And, and, and you endured I, it. I, I kept on enduring it because I wanted to prove to the people who abused me that I could um, go beyond relationship and end into marriage. You know the thing, my sister? Yeah, the one that think they care. They don't. They're not watching. That's the truth. In the next 20 years, most of them will be dead. And you will be married to someone you are not happy with so because you want to make them happy and mortgage the next 50 years of your own life. What's your name, please? Victoria. Leave. When I say leave, I'm not saying L-E-A-V-E. -E -E. L-I-V-E. Leave your life. Set new standard for your life and leave from there. Because the way you said now, the joy, see, the joy of your life is the fact that it's connected to some other people. How can other people's joy, how can your joy be in other people's hands and you think you'll be happy? You're often sad, right? Most of the time. Yeah, because it's the way you set the standard because, see, and you know, who's, who, who's your joy is connected to someone that does not love you? How will you be happy? Let me, let me tell you this. I always say this, but I'll say it now. Anytime you focus on what you cannot control, you become depressed. The perspective people have on you, you cannot control it. And that is, it's what it is. Leave it there and move on. Look at Jesus Christ. They called him a drunkard. My Lord, Master, and Savior. The man that fasted 40 days, prayed all night, Someone looked at him and concluded. Someone looked at him and concluded he was a drunkard. That's perspective of people. Praise God. Let me ask you another question. Have you forgiven yourself? To a great extent, yes. Are you I sure? Think, um, what did you forgive yourself of? the beginning of the year, I started... Uh, I started worshiping more. And yeah, that's great, but have you forgiven yourself? Yes. Do you blame yourself for what happened to you? Do I? Do you blame yourself for all the things that happened to you? Not as much as I used to, but I think to a greater extent I've been able to understand that um, most of the things that happened to me was not in my control. Exactly. And even if it was in your control, they are now lessons. Praise God. I said, praise God. I said, praise God. I said, praise God. I, I, want to, I want to just wrap this up. Thank God we have next week. There's no need to be in a hurry. So we can, you know, you know there's no need to be in a hurry. And we, we can take it. Okay, let me take about two or three more conversations around this. How your emotions, you know, you have all these emotional wounds. And maybe you're in a very bad place right now. I want someone that's in a very bad place. And you just need all the help to get out of it because there's always someone like that in this service. Okay, if you're like that, will you raise up your hands? Let me see. There's in a very bad place and you need all the help to get out. Just that first. You, okay, there's a lady here. There's a lady here. Okay, and there's one at the back. There's a, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, the microphone is coming towards you. Hello, what's your name? Good afternoon, Church. Good afternoon. What's your name? Um, my name is Abisola. Okay. You've had a word with me um, um, earlier last month, if I'm not mistaken. Just, just jump, just jump. Yes, jump to the issue. Um, right now, I don't want to talk about it again because coming to church, I've not been in church for two months now. I've just been following on online. Talk about the issue. So, last week... I joined, a friend of mine sent me a link about emotional damage and all, and I joined, I listened from it, he said that that was how I got myself to church, like today you are going to church. Okay. Well, you'll be fine. Um, I mean, an abusive uh, marriage. Marriage, okay. And it has really damaged me to the point that I don't even have control over it anymore, so I just started to let it go. I don't have control. Are you still in the marriage or you're out of it? I'm planning to get out. Okay. But you still live together? Sort of. Some kind. Like, Sometimes. For, for now. Okay. For now. Okay. Yeah, for now. I'm just going to for now. Because I don't have control. To the extent that they, they don't want me to have control over my kids anymore. Okay. So I don't have the power to talk again. I'm just, I'm going to just say I'm just visible like, like a ghost in the house. Yeah, a ghost in the house. Mm-hmm. So that's why this, how they see me and how I'm seeing myself. What do you want from this? Um, I have two babies, so the problem I'm having now is... What do you want from this? I want out. What is out? I just want to leave. What does that mean? Leave to do what? So have my own peace to be able to get myself back. The challenge is that when you're in the very deep emotional states... You never see outcomes. So let me tell you what's going to happen to you if you continue this way. You will live and enter more trouble. The reason why is that you are already down and depressed. So what happens, I'm not saying you should not leave. And I'm not saying you should stay. I'm not saying whatever it is. But I'm only saying that you need to get to a place where you can be in an emotional place and have an objective and outcome. The first thing I think you want to be is that you want to be happy. Yes, what does happy mean to you? Do you know what that means? Because happy means different things to different people. What does happy mean to you, Abisola? You need to write four things, four words that happy means to me. Happy means that I can go anywhere I want. I'm just using my own words. Happy means that I I can take care of myself financially. This is one thing I want. Number two, I also want my kids to be with me. This is why people get into trouble. So they jump out of fire not looking at where they are jumping to and they jump into a bigger fire. Tell me what I'm saying. Tell me. I've been planning this for over five months now. Because but are you clear? I know you've been planning. But, you know, because I've asked you now and you don't seem clear. My, my, my thing is that because are you clear about what happens next after this? Yes. Okay. Because so, it yeah. took me a long time, like, to, like a month to sit down and to think about okay so what happens next you don't have to give me the detail just give me one detail to be in my own space and to make things happen for me with the help of god okay okay i i i will take that i will take that but sincerely i would ask you to sit down with one of our pastors you know um you know ask you to sit down um where's mrs valley yeah, I'll ask you to sit down with her. You know, she, she would come to the front here after the service. And if that's what you want to do, you know, you need to just think through it. The reason why I'm saying so is that most times when people are in a negative state, they just make half big decision. So they move out and they begin to regret because the second, thing, the second problem is now worse than the first problem and they cannot go back again. So you just need to think through it and decide that's what you want to do and give a plan to it. So right now, how are you managing yourself? Um, very close to God. I okay. see myself worshiping almost every day. That's a good way. Almost every day. Uh, at some point... Um, do you focus on what you can control, what you can't control? It's what I can't control because what I can't control, I let it go already. Like, you let it go? Because I was so... So why were you not coming to church for two months until you got the video? 
the way you're looking at me, I'm size 16. I'm, not, I'm now size 10 for you to know how bad it is. You were size 16. <laughs> now you're size 10. I lost myself. I, I, I feel rejected. So what, is a, what are some good things you're grateful for right now? I'm grateful because I was able to get myself back. I'm, I'm getting myself. I'm not that yet. I'm not getting Okay, that's back. one. What other things are you grateful for? And, um, I'm seeing my future so, so... You're having a clear picture of the future? Yes. That's a good thing to have. Because I'm telling somebody, even... I told somebody yesterday, like, I didn't... Being on that, this same roof that I have now, I didn't see myself happy anymore. As long as I'm under that roof, there's nothing like happiness for me. Let, let me give you something. Something you can do for yourself. Every evening, write three things you're grateful for before you sleep. How's your health? How's your heart? I think that's the number two reason why I have to just put myself together. Your health is in challenge, right? I, I can tell. How did I know? Beloved, I wish you prosper even as your soul. Be prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Let me tell you something. Nothing affects health like emotions. Even your heart will just become irregular. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. So, remember what I said every night? Three things, and make sure you see her after the service. The last one. Someone that really, you know, someone. Yeah. I don't want to talk to anyone. And that's my friend. I'll be so biased. Yeah, anybody from that area? Just raise up your hands. That it's really pressing. You heard what is pressing. Yeah. Just wave. I, I, I can't see the hands. Where? Oh, yeah. Okay, there's someone here. I'm so, I, you know, it's a lot of light. When you stay on the stage, you know it's a lot of light. So I can't really... Yeah. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay. Um, I grew up in a family whereby my dad... My mom used to be like this superwoman. So she provides for everybody, even if my dad was still with us. And out of the blues, my dad went to marry another woman. And that thing really broke her to the point that I watched my mom being chubby, she lost so much weight that she reduced to like a size 10 or so. We literally had to be rushing out to the hospital on some days. And the one that broke me so much was uh, the times that I'll sit down, you out. So, what is the issue right now? The issue right now is I hate my dad so much. I've my mom, I've not seen her in over a year because we had to send her back to her father's house. She still hasn't recovered from it up to now. And each time I think about my dad, I just feel like she will just kill him so that she will get herself back. Maybe when he dies, probably she will become... That, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Kill him. <laughs> yeah. When you kill him, you now become fatherless, right? I don't care. You don't care? That's who's going to put the money to bury him? No, who's going to put the money to bury him? You see what I said about, you see what I was saying, the, the lady? Sometimes when you're in trouble, you don't think it true because you're in a downward emotional state. Because you say, kill him now. So when you kill him, let me tell you what's going to happen. Most likely he's married to this lady. The lady will not talk about all the properties of your father. And now make your life even worse for your mom. You don't care. Because Good. What's your name again? What's your name again? What's your name again? Beauty. Beauty, I'll tell you what you should do. I think what you should do is to focus on your mother's health and help her recover. Because the death of your father may not directly help your mother recover at all. She still have not gotten over that shock. She's That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So, can you focus on helping your mother recover from that shock and build a healthy relationship? That's what I'm saying. Because if your mother, if your father dies right now, it doesn't mean that he, she will get better. It's just like killing your ex-boyfriend, hoping your new boyfriend will like you. And you know what I want to say? What I wanted to say is that when people are emotionally depleted, they keep making mistakes that make things worse. You know, thank God she's saying it right now. Of course, it's a thought in her head. What about if someone had actually implemented it? Then it becomes complex. 
Because now, your mother is dealing with shock. Now, her husband has died. And that can lead her to greater shock and kill her. You now wonder that, hey, I've killed two people indirectly. <laughs> but the question is this. What can you do? This is what I would say. That energy to want to kill him and resources, can you put it together and focus that energy on your dad? Let me tell you something. Or your mom. A lot of people will know what they don't want. But what they want is what they do not know. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Someone said something. Yeah. You can tell you don't want this, but what do you want? You already know. Okay, let's close with this. Let's close with this. Three things you need to do to change. Number one, if you're going to experience change, number one, you need to tell yourself this must change. So that feeling you have, pretty or beauty, this must change. Your, your feeling must not be, I want to kill my father. Your feeling must be that I want my mom to be better. There must be another pathway. The reason why you want to kill your father is that you think in your mind that you've linked killing your father with recovery of your mom. And the truth is that they are not mutually as inclusive. They are very different. I can assure you that if you kill your father, your mother will not recover. But I'm saying to you, why not make the recovery of your mom your primary target? Even people that their husband like children and they kill the husband, who suffers ultimately? The children. And the guilt that stays with them. So, if you're going to, if you're going to heal emotional one, the first thing is this, you must make up your mind that no one, this must change. The second thing is this, I want to change. So, blessing, do you want to change that belief? I want to change. So, is that one thing that I want to change? And the last thing is this, I can change. Where's the lady that spoke just now? Was she? Yeah. The only reason why she got to where she is was because she began, until you get to the point where you say, I can change, you will never take responsibility for your life. I can change. I can take responsibility for my life. Three things. And how do you change? The first thing is that start by forgiving yourself. Have you forgiven yourself? What did you forgive yourself from? What? A lot. Tell me one of it. Yeah, take the microphone. Yeah, I can't hear you. So let's go back again. Have you forgiven yourself? Yes, sir. And you forgive yourself from like I said a lot but one of the things I thought is trying to you know put you said you've been saying a lot of things that is really really coming to me like thinking um uh, okay trying to find happiness okay put my, putting my happiness in someone's life and trying to disvalued myself just because I want to make someone happy or trying to prove myself to somebody or trying to so one of this is that you literally put your happiness in someone's hands and I've done so much stupid things wow I'm now regretting right now like wow so yeah this stupid but have you forgiven yourself yes yes sir why did you forgive yourself because I needed to to be strong and why spiritually why I needed to the reason why i want to forgive yourself is this there's nothing you can do about the past than to let it go boom there's nothing if you hold on to the past you will go back to the past some of you are angry that about this guy that i mean if you are angry that you dated some guy before that oh wow listen to me let me tell you, don't be angry at you. At that level, that was how intelligent you were. Unfortunately, life does not have like second chance. That's what makes it nice. The, the fact that, hey, hey, I was so stupid. Let's see what I dated. Be grateful you didn't marry him. Forgive yourself. Because if you knew better, you will what? Do better. So the reason why you forgive yourself, you know that, number one, life is a lesson. I learned it in a different way. And if I knew better, I would 
I will do better. Praise God. Stand on your feet. Let's pray. Oh, wow. I want you to put your hands over someone's shoulder and pray for them. Let, let's pray for everyone that's going through a tough time emotionally. Let's go, let's go ahead and pray. Let's go ahead and pray. This is a time of healing. Let's go ahead and pray. 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 Yeah. Pray for beauty. Yeah, pray for her. Pray. Let's go ahead and pray. Thank you, Lord. The Bible says he has anointed him to, to heal the brokenhearted. And Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we want to thank you. And right now I'm praying for everyone here. That Lord, in Jesus' name, please heal. Lord, please grant them the grace to be able to forgive themselves of what has gone in time past. The Bible says that if any man be in Christ, all things have passed away. He said, Behold, I do a new thing. Remember not the former things. I pray for them today. They'll receive the grace to forgive themselves and move on. In Jesus' mighty name. Look at that person you have prayed for and say, Please forgive yourself. Yeah. Please forgive yourself. Does this session bless you? Make sure you go on Twitter, on Facebook, on YouTube. Send me a message on Instagram and tell me how you felt. Tell me how, don't tell me what I preached because I know what I preached. You know, tell me how you felt from this. God bless you, you can have your seat.